Hi guys, welcome to ShapeLab's new tutorial series. My name is Peter and I work at ShapeLab as a 3D designer. You may have seen some of my work on Instagram and YouTube. In this series I will sculpt a high poly dragon. We will go from blockout to rendering. I present different tools, techniques and features that you can use in ShapeLab. In today's part we will talk about reference images, blockout, din topo and voxel remesh. This is not a ShapeLab introductory video or not a video to introduce the basic interactions, navigation or UI, but rather for beginners, so if you are interested in the basics, watch our previous series on YouTube. So let's get started. As you can see, I have already collected a few reference images. Before you start sculpting, always take the time to collect reference images. From these, you can see what the creature's anatomy, skin, posture are like. You can search for such images on Google, Pinterest or ArtStation. If you are making an imaginary creature such as a dragon, collect pictures of different animals for its anatomy. For example, it has wings like a bat, its skin can be as scaly as a viper, and its head is like that of a komodo dragon or an alligator. There are several types of dragons. Some have front legs and a body structure similar to a big cat. But there are those that rest on their wings and have no front legs. They are more like reptiles. Collect pictures from as many angles as possible so that all parts of the creature are visible. If you have the pictures, you have to decide what type of dragons to make. I decided to make the ones without front legs, like the ones in the House of Dragon series. Ok, I collected reference pictures and decided what kind of dragon I'm going to make. Now comes the blockout. So, to start with, I turn on symmetry to save time and start sculpting the shape of the body with the move tool. If I turn on the wireframe, you can see what the move tool does with the polygons. It stretches them and thus it is not possible to work on them properly. This can be fixed by smoothing it a bit with the smooth tool, and when Dynetopo or Dynamic Topology is turned on, my brush will add or remove polygons. Based on what resolution I choose and what density I have on the surface area, I'm using the brush on. Another way to fix it is to open the context menu and do a voxel remesh. Here you can set the resolution and how smooth it should be. I don't increase the resolution because at the beginning the fewer the polygons the better. In this way it is easier to create the main shapes. And the object is much more manageable than if it consisted of tens of thousands of polygons. Ok, the body is pretty much there, but I'm going to focus attention on the shoulders and pelvis a bit more. I will fit the rest of the body parts to this. I make the neck from a separate object and now I turn off the symmetry, because I want to set the pose right away. Normally, if I wanted to animate it later I wouldn't do this way, but instead sculpt it in a static pose with symmetry, and adjust the pose later. But only static renders will be made of this model, maybe a turntable, and so it's more convenient for me to sculpt. So there is a sphere which I adjust to the torso and select the tentacle tool, then turn on the steady stroke, so that I can shape the neck evenly. If I turn this off, it is difficult to control the tool. I start to draw out the neck evenly with it. At the end, I adjust it a bit with the move tool. I repeat the same thing with the tail, with the difference that I thin the end with the smooth tool. I 
I create a sphere for the head and turn on the symmetry. Because this does not need to be posed either now or later. I can just fit it on the neck and match it with it at the end. There is no need to go into detail, even if the temptation is great. The basic form should be uniform first. Just roughly form the spikes at the back of the head. At first I wanted his mouth to be closed, but I think it's much cooler if it's open and howls or spews fire. With the clay tool I roughly make the roof of the mouth. And with the move tool I pull out his jaw. Well, maybe it looks better this way. And the teeth, gums and tongue will have to be done as well, but we will create them later. Next is the leg. Now I create a sphere and fit it to the pelvic bone. With the move tool I draw out the tie. And with the standard tool I roughly shape the knee, the leg, the foot and the fingers. The standard tool adds to the shape. Working with it feels a bit like drawing. The leg can be made by assembling it from several objects and merging it at the end, or you can use the stem tool and build the leg from simple shapes, then refine it a bit with the smooth tool. When I'm done with it, I'm going to clone the leg to have the same legs on both sides. I have to switch to scene mode, pop up the leg models context menu, select the transport tab and go to clone and mirror. Here I can choose which mirror plane I want to use. I would like to use the body and its x-axis. So I press the purple input field first, which activates the object selection tool. And I just select the dragon's body in the scene. Then I choose the x-axis and press apply and that's it. The leg appeared on the other side of the body. Now that the legs are ready, I will also make the ground on which he stands. I make a circle and then change its size and fit it to the legs. The wings are just like the wings of bats, so the parts of the wings are shoulder, upper arm, forearm and the fingers. There is also skin between the fingers. The skin will have a different material, so I will do that separately. That way I can add the subsurface scattering later in Blender and it will be even more lifelike. I think it's easier to make the arm with the tentacle tool. Now comes the tricky part. I'm going to use the separate mask tool to create the fingers. I mask the finger and open the context menu. I select the triangle icon and press the separate button under edit mask polygons. It separates the mask part nicely, but I'm not done yet. You can see that there is a hole on the finger and the forearm. There is also a close holes button for this. I will do it on both parts and I can already clone the finger. I fit the other fingers to the right place while looking at the reference images.
When I'm done with that, I join the fingers and the forearm together. On the boolean tab, I select what I want to merge with and click on Union. As far as I can see, the other fingers are a bit longer than the index finger, so I adjust that. If the fingers are in the right place, then I do the skin between them. For this, I create a new object. I choose a square and with the move tool I adjust it nicely to the fingers. So the fingers can be seen on both sides. I have to do it carefully, because this way the square will be quite thin and I don't want the two opposite sides to touch each other, because then the back face becomes visible. At the end, I make the edge with the pinch tool. So, block out is done. We have reached the end of the first part. In the following sections, I will deal with the anatomy, work out the details and present the alphas and the painting.